first part of the year, we did a lot of radicals, so hopefully it's still on your mind. Move number one, you always got to break them up because these are square roots, and square roots are going to undo squares. So you got to see if there's any squares in 54. So 54 is a 9 times a 6, and just keep breaking them down till you get to the prime factors. 9 is 3 times 3. That's prime, that's prime. 6 is 2 times 3, and they're both prime. So, you're going to swap out 54 for a 2 times a 3 times a 3 times a 3. And that is a square. A square is a pair. It takes two of them. Because that 3 times 3 is the same thing as 3 squared. And this square root is going to undo the square, they undo each other, squares and square roots. So, anytime you have two or more, they get undone and they move to the outside. So this square root is going to erase this square, so three comes to the outside. And outside, all you have is a minus, so you're going to put a three there, and then on the inside you still have this uh, two and this 3, so 2 times 3, and it's all times, so your final answer is negative 3 square root of 6, so oh, that's just this one. Okay, so you have a negative 3 square root of 6, 6 is broken down, there are no squares in 6, so we got negative 3 square root of 6, let me go back, uh, so I'm just going to bring this down, plus 3 square root of 6, and then the 45, now this is one term right here, so it's a minus 3 times the square root of 45. That minus 3 is out in the front, and don't forget the minus. 45, break it down to 9 and 5. 5 is prime, 9 is a square. 9 is 3 times 3. So, here's what you got. You got a negative 3 times the square root of 3 squared times 5. So that square root is going to undo this square. So 3 comes out here. So you've got a negative 3 already out there, and you're bringing a 3 out. You times them, and what's left on the inside is just 5. So a negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9, square root of 5, and this is what you've got. Okay, now it's adding. So you can only add like terms. And you've got to remember, these are the units. These are what it's measuring by. So square roots of 6 and square roots of 6, they are like terms. They're the same unit. They are both square roots of 6. So this is the same thing as negative $3 plus $3. What is after the coefficient? This number is called the coefficient. That's how many you got. What is after is the unit by which you're measuring. So if I've got a negative $3 and a positive $3, that's zero. They zero out. So these two right here will zero out. So all you're left with is you have negative 9 square root of 5. Okay, the next one, you just have uh, one radical here. So you got some things on the outside, you got some things on the inside. Move number 1, bust up 12, 12 is 3 times 4, 3 is prime, 4 is your square. So that's the same thing as 2 squared times 3. And that square root is going to undo that square, so 2 comes to the outside. And on the outside there's already a negative 3 times x squared, so you're going to times it by 2. So the 2 times is the negative 3. So on the outside, you have a negative 6 times x squared. And then on the inside, the 3 stays put because there's only one of them. And you've got to have two or more. Okay, now your x's. Let's see, you've got five of the x's. So that's x squared, x squared, x1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 x's, and if you've got 5 of them, you got 2 pairs. So this square root undoes that square, this square root undoes that square, so that x comes out, this x comes out, 
And that X stays put. Okay, your Ys, you've got six of them. So, you either write them in squares like you did the X's, or you write them out the long way, but the long way is kind of tedious. One, two, three, four, five, six. And any time you have a pair, that's two of them, they come out. So, one pair, two pairs, three pairs. So total on the outside, you should have a negative six. And your X's, we've got two, three, you've got X to the four. And we brought three pairs of Y's out, so Y cubed. And then what stayed in was, uh, three stayed in. And this X right here stayed in. All of your Y's made it out. Okay, next one. Has a multiplication problem. So times is not bad. When you times, you just times the coefficients, times the numbers on the outside. So the 3 times is the 3. And that makes a 9. And then times these guys together, the 10 times the 8. So the 10 times the 8, instead of doing 10 times 8, I'm just going to write them both under here. Because 10 times 8 will make 80. But then you're just going to have to bust 80 down. So let's bust these guys up. 10 is a 2 and a 5. 2 is prime. 5 is prime. 8 is a 4 times a 2. 2 is prime. 4 is 2 times 2. Okay. So on the outside, you got 9, and on the inside, we've got 2, 2, 2, 2, 5. And it's all times, 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 times. So that's a square, that's a square. 2 comes out, 2 comes out. So on the outside, you got 9 times 2 times 2. And on the inside, 5 is the only thing left over. So 9 times 2 is 18 times 2 is 36. Your answer should be 36 square roots of 5. Okay, this one's a divide problem. Those are more complicated. They're not as easy as times. Times is pretty straightforward. Okay, divide. Um, if you got a fraction, the numbers on the outside play together. So 2 is out, 5 is out. And if you can, shrink them down, simplify them. And 2 and 5 are already simplified. They got nothing in common. Um, so 3 is done. There's no squares in 3, but n to the 4 is n, 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 n. So let's clean up your n's first. Always pulse as much as you can out before you move on. So that is 1, that's 2 squares. So n comes out, n comes out. So now on top, we still got our 2. And with the 5, you're going to bring an N out and an N out. And on the inside, you just got 3. So that is the same thing as 2 over 5N squared times the square root of 3. Okay, now, you cannot have a square root on the bottom. You can't leave a radical in the denominator. So we're going to turn this irrational number into a rational number. So it's a pretty easy fix. You just multiply this fraction by 1, because you're going to times it by 1. 1 will not change the value at all, but it will totally change the appearance. So whatever the irrational is, whatever this radical is, times it by itself. As long as you do that to the top and to the bottom. So now on top, the 2 multiplies the number on the outside, so the 2 times is the 1. So on top, you've got 2 square roots of 3. Okay, now the bottom, this is on the outside, so it times is what's on the outside, which is just 1. So you got 5n squared, and the underneath the radical, this 3, times is this 3. And that creates square root of 9. And square root of 9 is a perfect square. That's a good number. So square root of 9 is no longer irrational. Square root of 9 is just 3. 
So you really have this on the bottom. You have 5n squared, not times the square root of 9, but times the square root of 3. Okay, on top you got two square roots of 3. So, last step, times the 5 and the 3 together. On top you got two square roots of 3. On bottom you got 15n squared. And that's it. 2 and the 15 are on the outside. They play together, but 2 and 15 have nothing in common, so they're already simplified as far as it'll go. Okay, the next one is another fraction. It looks a little more hairy than the first one. So let's start cleaning it up. First, see if you can simplify it. 4 and 2, this time they will simplify. So 4 and 2, divide them both by 2. That's going to change to a 2. That's going to change to a 1. Okay, now underneath, those play together. So the 5 and the 15 will change, divide them by what they got in common, change them to, uh, divide them both by 5, that changes to a 1, that changes to a 3. And on top, if you've got x cubed, that's 3x's, and on the bottom, you've got x to the 4th, you got 4x's, they're going to divide out. 3 of these x's on top are going to divide out 3 of the x's on bottom. So really, on bottom, you just have 1x. Okay? So now on the top, square to 1, that's a perfect square. That's just 1. So you have 2 times 1. So on top, you have 2. And on bottom, you have square root of 3x. Okay? Now it's illegal to leave a fraction in a fraction. You cannot have a square root. So you've got to turn the square root into a perfect square. And to do that, you just times it by itself. Whatever it is, times it by itself. So if it's square root 3x, times it by square root 3x. And you got to times the top also by square root 3x. So on top, 2 times square root 3x, 2 times is the 1, because they're both on the outside. So you got 2 square root 3x on the bottom. The underneath times together, and you have 3 times 3 is 9, which is awesome. And you have x times x, which is x squared, and that is awesome. So the square root of 9 is going to turn into 3. And the square root of x squared, that square root is going to undo the square, so you got x. Then on top, you still got two square roots of 3x. This is where you stop. Okay, next, this type of problem. No radicals, just exponents. So you got to know the rules of exponents. Exponents. Um, you can never have a negative exponent, so this guy right here is a problem. And then on the top, if you have the same letter, 